here's an example. Um, A is 5.6, beta is 19 degrees, C is 9.1. So this is a new case. We haven't had one of these before. This is called a side angle side. And notice that you don't have any what I call matches. So there's no case uh, here where the side and the angle opposite are known. So because you don't have that, then you can't use the law of sines. Um, not that that's always what you're going, going for, is just to use law of sines, um, because that has its own issues with the ambiguous case. So law of cosines is what we're going to use here. And let's first use it to find b. So we know that b squared is a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cosine beta. And oh, by the way, um, one of the one of the ways it uh, is a technique for memorizing formulas is uh, whenever you're going to use the formula, write the formula. And after you do enough homework problems, if you've written this law of cosines over and over again, it will help you memorize it. Another trick is to say it out loud when you write the formula. All right, so we've got b squared equals 5.6 squared plus 9.1 squared minus 2 times 5.6 times 9.1 times the cosine of 19 degrees. And that's a fairly straightforward calculation. Um, you can do that in your calculator, and when you do that, you get 17.8 17 for b squared, and then of course you have to square root it. You could do that right in your calculator, and you end up with 4.22. So I know that b is 4.22. So now let's figure out gamma. All right, so at this point, let me do some erasing here. Um, I'm going to do it two ways. I'm going to do it with the law of sines and show you something, and I'm going to do it with the law of cosines and show you that. So let's first start with the law of cosines, and we want to uh, figure out gamma, so we're going to use the c squared. Um, c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine gamma. So we know that cosine gamma is going to be c squared minus a squared minus b squared all over negative 2 times, oops, oops, times a times b. And when we fill all that in, cosine gamma, so we've got 9.1 squared minus 5.6 squared minus 4.22 squared all divided by negative 2 times 5.6 times 4.22 and when you do that and then take the inverse you're going to get 135.4 degrees so let's write that in 135.4 degrees this kind of makes sense doesn't it my largest side is C and so now the largest angle is across from that. So let's just do something different. Let's pretend you didn't use the law of cosines to find gamma. Let's pretend you use the law of sines. So you could say that the sine of beta is to be as the sine of gamma is to C. We're solving for um, gamma here. So the sine of B, let's see, we're going to have sine of 19 degrees divided by 4.22, that's going to equal sine of gamma divided by 9.1. Multiplying both sides by 9.1, you get the inverse sine is going to equal 9.1 times the sine of 19 degrees all over 4.22. And when you do that, you get going to get 44.59. Hmm. That's not what we got over here, is it? Oh, but wait. There's. I have to also check for the other angle. Remember? In the circle, it appears 44.5 degrees. There's another angle over here, right? With the same sign. So I have to take 180 minus 44.59, and when I do that, 
do that it gives me one thirty-five point four. Oh, that's what I got over here. Well, how do I know which one is right? How do I know I don't have two triangles? Okay, so this can uh, gamma cannot be forty-four point nine because alpha then would be the biggest angle, and alpha is across from five point six. That can't be. The biggest angle has got to be across from 9.1, so it's got to be the 134.5. So one of the advantages of using law of cosines, even though it looks like it's a lot more work, it's really not. But one of the <coughs> pardon me, one of the advantages is you don't have to worry about that second angle because the law of cosines automatically gives you uh, angles. So if you think of a circle you're going to get with inverse cosine. Well, these are your positive cosines, 0 through 90 degrees. And over here in quadrant 2, the cosine is negative. So that's going to be your, your 90 degrees to 180. So it just automatically, your correct angle just pops up uh, based on what you put in here for your inverse. So an advantage to using the law of cosines.